chapter five, parental conditions that tend to stifle the child within, from the book, Healing the Child Within. How can a mother, other parent, figure, or later in life, a close friend, be able to help us meet many of our needs? In general, they must have had their needs met as children and or worked through a process as adults of healing their own child within and learning to get their needs met. However, certain conditions may interfere with getting needs met. The more deprived, more severe, or advanced the parents and family's condition, the less the child's needs tend to be met. These parental conditions are listed in Table 3. The word parental means not only the parent, but may also include siblings and anyone else. And in the life of an older child, and certainly in that of an adult, refers to any close or otherwise influential person. Alcoholism and other chemical dependence. Alcoholism or other chemical dependence can be defined as reoccurring trouble, problems or difficulties associated with drinking or drug use. The trouble may occur in one or more of several areas, including relationships, education, legal, financial, health, spiritual, and occupational. We know that Often, children of alcoholics, COAs, and other family members tend to be unaware that their parent or other family member is alcoholic or dependent on another drug, from Black in 1984. Estimates that close to half of adult children of alcoholics deny a parental drinking problem, and up to 90% of COAs who themselves become alcoholic or chemically dependent cannot identify a parental drinking problem. This lack of awareness of the major source of the family chaos results in extensive, destructive, and unnecessary acceptance, as well as self-blame and guilt among family members. Any reader who wanders or is concerned about a parent's or another relative's drinking or drug use may find it helpful to answer the following family drinking survey. If you are no longer living with the family member in question, or if they are deceased, try to answer these questions as though you were still living with them. If it is drug use about which you have been concerned, substitute drug use for drinking in the questions. see them. If you want to go over those questions, you can pause it. Here's the second side of the questions. All right. Codependence. The next condition is codependence or codependency, originally termed co-alcoholism in the 1970s. Codependence is far more inclusive in this 1980s. Five definitions can be found in Table 4. All right, let's see. Codependence is a condition that stifles our true self, our child within, it results from and contributes to all of the parental conditions in Table 3 above. Those were the questions. We can begin to define codependence as any suffering and or dysfunction that is associated with or results from focusing on the needs and behaviors of others. Codependents become so focused upon their and preoccupied with important people in their lives that they neglect their true self. As Schiff says in her book, Codependence, it, it leads to a process of non-living, which is progressive. Endemic and ordinary humankind, codependence can mimic 
be associated with and aggravate many conditions. It develops from turning our responsibility for our life and happiness over to our ego and to other people. Pretty sure you can see that. <sighs> Development of codependence. The genesis of codependence begins by the repression of our observations, feelings, and reactions. Others, often our parents, and eventually we begin to invalidate these are often crucial internal cues. Usually, early in the process, we begin to deny a family secret or another secret. Because we focus so much on the needs of others, we begin to neglect our own needs. And by so doing, we stifle our child within. But we still have feelings, often of hurt. Since we continue to stuff our feelings, we become increasingly tolerant of emotional pain. We often become numb. And because we stuff our feelings, we are unable to grieve our everyday losses to completion. All of the above blocks our growth and development in the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of our being. my place. But we still have feelings, often of hurt. Since we continue to stuff our feelings, we become increasingly tolerant of emotional pain. We often become numb. And because we stuff our feelings, we are unable to grieve our everyday losses to completion. All of the above blocks our growth and development in the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of our being. But we have a desire to contact and to know our true self. We learn that quick fixes such as compulsive behaviors will allow us to glimpse our true self and will let off some of the tension. However, if the compulsive behavior is destructive to us or to others, we may feel shame and a resulting lower self-esteem. At this point, we may begin to feel more and more out of control. And we try to compensate by the need to control even more. We may end up deluded and hurt and often project our pain onto others. Our tension has now built to such an extent that we may develop stress-related illnesses manifested by aches and pains and often by dysfunction of one or more body organs. We are now in an advanced state of codependence and may progressively deteriorate so that we experience one or more of extreme mood swings, difficulty with intimate relationships, and chronic unhappiness. For those who are attempting to recover from alcoholism, other chemical dependence, or another condition or illness, this advanced state of codependence may seriously interfere. The development of codependence may thus be summarized as follows. Growth of codependence. One, invalidation and repression of internal cues, such as our observations, feelings, and reactions. Neglecting our needs. Three, beginning to stifle our child within. Four, denial of a family or other secret. Increasing tolerance of and numbness to emotional pain. Six, Inability to grieve a loss to completion. Seven, blocking of growth means mental, emotional, and spiritual. Eight, compulsive behaviors in order to lessen pain and to glimpse our child within. Nine, progressive shame and loss of self-esteem. Ten, feeling out of control, need to control more. Eleven, Delusions and projection of pain. 12. Stress-related illness develops. Compulsions worsen. 14. Progressive deterioration. 
and that includes I didn't get that could you try again <laughs> that's funny and on 14 progressive deterioration which includes extreme mood swings difficulty with intimate relationship chronic unhappiness interfering with recovery from alcoholism chemical dependence and other conditions whether we are an infant or a child growing up with such a codependent person or whether we are an adult living with or close to them it is highly likely that with our present awarenesses and coping skills we will be negatively affected by the process described in the first half of this book our true self will be stifled whether <laughs> the sub Utilities of codependence. Codependence is one of the most common conditions causing confusion and suffering in the world. It may be subtle in its manifestations and therefore difficult to identify. The following is a case history of Karen, a 45 year old woman whose parents were codependent, and through growing up with them, she became codependent. When I heard the characteristics of adult children of alcoholics described, I saw a lot of myself in them. So I looked and looked for an alcoholic in my family background and I couldn't find one. I found I had to look deeper as my parents both had a lot of characteristics of codependence. My father was also a workaholic. He was such a success, but he gave his time and energy to everyone except his family. He was the mayor of our town, and I felt guilty when I asked him for attention. He just wasn't there for me as a father and to help me when I was growing up. My mother was a compulsive overeater, although I didn't know that at the time. She wasn't the mother I needed either. They both trained me to be a self-sacrificer and a real people pleaser. I married two alcoholic men and gradually became so focused on them that I neglected my own needs and felt like I was losing my mind. I didn't know how to say no to people because my life was going so badly I tried to correct it with the only way I knew how from my past. I worked harder. Went back to college, getting into super responsibility and compulsive overactivity, and I neglected my needs even more. I was depressed and became progressively more depressed, so much so that I took an overdose of sleeping pills. That was my bottom. In desperation, I called AA and they told me to go to Al-Anon, which I did. I attended a meeting every day and I loved it. Now, it's six years later and I still attend one meeting a week. I also had two and a half years of group therapy and several months of individual therapy. I found it all very helpful. Looking back, I discovered that not only was my recovery program helpful mentally and emotionally, it was a great help to me spiritually. I discovered that my biggest problem was with my mother, on whom I had come to depend regarding how I was supposed to feel and how I was supposed to live. I was so sick that I couldn't even feel a lie and live for myself. I had to look to others to see how to feel and live. I was angry at my mother for this and my father for supporting her for doing so and for his not being there for me when I needed him. And I picked two husbands who unknowingly encouraged me to continue all of these patterns. I'm so glad that I made recovery. Karen's story represents some of the subtle manifestations of codependence. Chronic mental illness or disabling chronic physical illness. Chronic mental illness may range from subtle and mild to obvious and disabling. It may include any of the major chronic mental and emotional illnesses listed and described in the DSM-3, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, 3rd edition of the American Psychiatric Association. The following is case history of Barbara, a 56-year-old married woman with four children and a professional career. Four years ago, I finally went for help. I had been depressed since my early childhood. In therapy, I learned that my mother had been chronically depressed most of her life. I remember a time in my mid-twenties when she got me a date with a man whom she was having an affair while she was still married to and was living with my father. 
I felt really bad about going out with him. My father had been cold and distant from both me and my mother. Later, when my mother was hospitalized from taking an overdose of sleeping pills, I learned that my father had been impotent for most of their marriage. That was a family secret, of course. I viewed my father's distance and my mother's chronic depression as my fault, as long as I can remember, and I felt a lot of shame and guilt over it. I survived as a child by being obedient, doing well in school, and focusing on my mother. I took on a caretaker role. As a teenager, I went to the library and read everything I could find on psychology in an attempt to cure my mother and father. In my recovery in psychotherapy and in my self-reflection, I learned that I was fused with my mother, that our boundaries were so merged that it literally woke up every morning and didn't know how I felt until I looked at how my mother was feeling. I also learned that my father's coldness and distance had nothing to do with how good a little girl I was or how hard I worked, that it had to do with him. I learned that I no longer had to be a victim. Since then, I have been feeling better overall. My life is going better. I continue to work on getting free of my old problems. By reaching out for help, Barbara came to recognize the damage done to her true self by growing up in a troubled family and is now well on her way to recovery. Extreme rigidity, punitiveness, judgmentalness, non-loving, perfectionism, or inadequacy. We're going to do that one next. Thank you for listening.